Hello. Uh, today, we're uh, delighted to be here with Hilary Lefwich of Alchemy Author Services, which is a new enterprise that she is uh, initiating. And we hope that uh, there'll be an opportunity for students to work with, with Hillary. Welcome, Hillary from Colorado. Yes. <laughs> um, Thanks so much, Phil. <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, Alchemy Author Services. What, what kinds of services do you offer the authors? So I would say um, if you're wanting to be a professional writer, I cover everything from the very first step all the way to the end. That involves um, every type of editing service that you can think of. So for example, developmental editing is when you've got something written, but you're not sure where it's going. Um, that would be developmental editing. Or um, if you have something that is completed, and you need to find out um, or have somebody look at it as far as every type of editing is, is are the characters developed? Is the theme working? Um, all of those things. Uh, I also offer those type of editing. Um, the other aspects I offer to the editing service would be manuscript evaluation. Um, this is a less detailed type of editing service and more of an overall uh, editing service. So just to kind of read the whole manuscript and tell you if you're hitting all the marks that you're needing to. Um, I also offer beta reading um, services, uh, which can be really useful if you're wanting to just get like an overall type of feedback on your novel. Um, and this can be any novel. It can be a literary fiction, memoir, hybrid, poetry, um, whatever it might be. I also offer um, 24 hour emergency editing services mm -hmm. um, because we all kind of get in that bind if a contest sneaks up on you at the last minute and you don't have any of your writer friends available or you don't want to push that on them at the last second. Uh, there's 24 hour emergency editing that you can send to me and I will get back to you within 24 hours. Um, I offer, offer mentorships. Um, I'm doing one of those now uh, for writers. And that can be really anything that a writer needs um, as far as the mentorship goes, anything that they're interested in. Um, it's kind of like a shadowing to see what I do. The other things that I offer, um, I'm trying to think, uh, when you're ready to publish your novel, I offer, uh, author bio critiques and revisions, um, query letter writing, uh, book synopsis, and pitch letters. Um, I also match you with a list of agents that I think would work specific to your genre and what you're looking for, um, because that can be kind of a huge issue if you're submitting pitches to agents that, for example, don't cover your genre. Um, and sometimes it takes agents uh, quite some time to get back to you. So time always factors into this. You really wanna make sure you're pitching to the right agent. So I offer that as well. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so kind of from beginning to end, um, I offer everything that you need that's uh, involved with being a professional writer. Um, and a bit of that also goes into your social media presence, um, whether you should if you don't, if you're not active on social media, should you start building a platform? There's, there's a lot of different details that go into being a professional writer that I don't think writers realize. So I cover all of that. Wow, that's, a, that's very comprehensive. And, you know, we talked a little earlier about the fact that you got your experience uh, with literary magazines and working with all sorts of, of literary magazines. Let me, let me ask you, Hillary. What you mentioned earlier, well, you know, there, there's certain things that make something go into the slush pile or not. What, if, if there's some way you could describe what it is that you think gets a piece of work out of the slush pile and into consideration? Um, I would say just paying attention to the details of the journals and, and what they're asking for specifically is one huge thing. Um, they might have a specific theme happening at the time. Um, they might even state on the journal, we've 
been overwhelmed with just as an example um, pieces about the pandemic and we are no longer looking for pieces about the pandemic so please don't send them at this time mm -hmm. and it's just those little things um, but also just a lot of I guess tropes um, can get you into the slush pile I would say just just be bold, be daring, um, be risky with language, um, anything like that. Try and do like a new take on something. Um, I've, for example, I've received so many rejections on a certain story that I've had um, because they gave great feedback basically saying, we get way too many stories about, believe it or not, people with Alzheimer's. Um, and I never knew that. So, you know, if you're going and, that, and it's fine to write a story, for example, about somebody with Alzheimer's, but how are you going to make that unique? And I think that's what's going to separate you from the slush pile is making it your own and making it unique. You know, that's an amazing thing that I think only editors really uh, learn uh, how was how much other material like yours i mean writers are sitting there in their isolated space and and they don't have the luxury of of seeing the landscape in fact what i what i tell people is you know I, as an acquisitions editor at etruscan i don't mm -hmm. feel like i see the river i have a blindfold on but i have my finger in the flow of the river so i know the, i know the, the speed and the temperature yeah. <laughs> And, and you're right, you'll find, uh, you know, it's amazing how you say, well, this is a very good poem or a very good book, but I just read four that are just like it. And how could any of those authors know that? So, so offering a service where you're kind of bringing this broader perspective that can only really uh, be uh, achieved through, I think, editing and receiving a lot. You're going through a lot of slush files. Yes. Uh, and, and uh, you know, getting a perspective based on that. And so now you're taking this company and, and starting it. A student who would be working with you, as say, you know, an intern, for instance, um, what, what would they be doing? I mean, you know, I, I knock on your door and I say, hi, you know, I'm, I'm a young, I'm a new young writer and I want to learn what you know. Uh, how's that going to work? I would say it's it's all up in the air. I, I never know what I'm going to get um, on a weekly basis. Uh, I get all kinds of things. I, I'll, I'll get a YA manuscript or somebody will say, hey, can you help me with this collection of essays? Or I'm having problems getting an agent. Can you look at my query letter? Can you look at my pitch? So it's really gonna vary um, from day to day, week to week. But I can guarantee that it's going to cover pretty much everything. They're going to learn pretty much everything, um, which is great experience to have as a writer, just wanting to be a professional writer, but also if you want to take, take that a step further and become an editor yourself or even become an agent, um, any of those things, uh, or start your own journal. Um, these things are really important to know and the other aspect to that is people will be looking to you for example if you want to start your own journal and phil you know this is people are going to be looking at the masthead or they should be and seeing okay well if i'm going to submit to this journal then i'm going to look at the masthead and if the people running this journal don't have a lot of publishing experience why should i submit to them so I think it also comes from experience as well. If you have this experience under your belt, you're just going to become all the more successful in whatever it is that you're trying to do. Right, right. And, you know, there, it, it does go hand in hand. Um, reading unpublished manuscripts, I, you, know, it's a, you know, this is the only time, unpublished manuscripts, the only time when you read something uh, without any kind of uh, uh, previous uh, idea of what it is. It could be anything. I mean, if you're reading a friend's manuscript, well, it's your friend. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting for that basis alone. You know, you get the, you have this meta conversation with a person through their work. Or if it's something published, you know, or some, you know somebody liked it, 
and, and you read it, you know, in, in, in that vein. Uh, but here you're getting something with absolutely no context, you know, and the editor is really the only person who gets it. You have to make a decision and you have to develop your own sensibility, you know, how you're going to uh, approach these different things. And you can make huge errors and that's the way it goes. Um, you also mentioned, uh, Hillary, that, that as a new enterprise, you're going to be marketing this, this yes. enterprise. How, how, how does one do that? <laughs> well, um, I think it has a lot to do with social media as okay. well. Um, hitting all the platforms, getting the word out, but also being really creative. Um, I know a lot of companies and businesses and individuals that used like Hootsuite, for example. And uh, I, in my own internship years ago, it's, it's easier to use these type of services where you just, you schedule all of your content and you put it in in like one day and then spread out throughout the week or weeks, it's just gonna post that. And it's really easy to fall back on these services and have them post the same content over and over and over again. And I think the problem with that is your audience is getting numb to your content. If they're able to predict what it is you're posting and trying to sell. So for me, um, just for myself and my own opinion, I don't want that. I want fresh, unique, creative content. And I don't want to be too much of uh, hovering over uh, somebody doing this type of thing. I want them to feel creative and have a lot of leeway with it uh, because that's how I learned in my internship. They gave me a lot of freedom and I was able to explore and be creative and, and it turned into something fun rather than like feeling like a really overwhelming task. So I think just being open and being creative and developing different kinds of content and just not numbing your your possible clients with the same predictable thing every time is, is really important to me as a business. And that's awfully time consuming. And, you know, and that, that, you know, to, you're bringing the, the originality and creativity that we usually think of as associated with literary work. You're bringing that to the, to the marketing field, the yes. same kind of strategies. You know, I, t I tell people who are writing grants, I say, you know, I say, well, I've never written a grant before. I say, well, you're really just telling a story. You know you're, that you're you're trying to to get somebody to relate to you in the same way, and I think that that's a wonderful thing about the the kind of of marketing technique that you just described you just described because you can see people drawing upon their native creativity in order yes. to become good marketers. Exactly. You know? So there's not that divide that we usually think of. Um, the the other exciting thing I mean I have to say you know starting this new endeavor was. You know, it sounds to me like it's a, a new company with a long history because you've done a lot of work to uh, develop the skills that are going to be brought to bear and made and featured in, in this company. And I, and I wonder, um, is there a certain profile or certain uh, characteristics or, 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 or certain ambitions that you would look for in an intern in particular? I would say, um, obviously creativity, but also an openness to learn things that might scare you or feel overwhelming or may, may make them feel like, uh, I, I don't have an interest in this and, or I don't think I can learn this. You would be surprised what you can learn. And I think it's important if you want to be a professional writer to learn these things because you're going to learn them one way or the other. You can make it really easy on yourself um, by learning them and being open to learning these experiences and these skills. Or you might find yourself staring at your computer screen one day with a really amazing novel that you just wrote and thousands of agent rejections and you have no idea why. Um, and you don't have money to, to pay somebody to help you. And it's, it's entirely up to you to get this novel out. And so I think learning these things and just being open to them and also realizing in the long run, they're going to help you become 
uh, a much better professional writer as well and marketing yourself as well. Hilary Lefwich, Alchemy Author Services. Uh, we're so delighted to uh, uh, welcome you into this intrepid enterprise <laughs> and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to work together um, to bring interns to your, your company. And in, in any case, we're gonna follow this with, with uh, great interest and uh, as you launch. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, and, Phil. Um, I look forward to working with you in the future. You as well. Thank you.